sorry, man. Jeff Ridson, uh, right for Lions Rider. Rider. <clears throat> Hopefully, I say that right. Uh, apparently, he was predicting that Levon Anazorki is going to go on the IR list and miss the rest, uh, miss the whole season. Now, Dan Campbell <clears throat> was on record saying that uh, he won't be ready for Week One. But uh, right now, he ain't on the IR list. <clears throat> he said if you had to twist his arm, that he wouldn't be ready for week one. Then he said that uh, his pro his progression, his progress is moving like a snail, and there's been no major setbacks or none of that nature. But it don't sound good. How about that? It don't sound good for Levi Zorkin, <clears throat> Detroit Lions. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. The subscribe button, the bell icon button, hit all notifications, increase your chance of notifications. We go live or drop a video. So it don't seem good. Um you know why would he you know predict that this man may go on and miss a whole season on IR, you know, you know, then he won't be ready for week one. You know, my expectations is that we're probably gonna see him go on the pub list. And you know, if he ain't 100%, the back was, you know, if he ain't played a snap, snap in the NFL, his back has been a problem. All right? You get a whole year to heal, back's still a problem. You know, this is in the long laundry list of Detroit Lions, GMs, and coaches drafting injury-prone players. And Brad Holmes don't seem to be no different. Um, I don't know if, it, you know, it's just bad luck. You know, I know it's a combination of taking chances on injury-prone players and guys getting here and being injured. So what's the issue? Is it strength and conditioning? Is the uh, the practice regimen? I mean, what is the issue with so many injuries going on with, Lions, with, with the Lions? Even guys who ain't injury-prone uh, coming into the NFL, coming to Detroit, and they start just getting broken up. I know the NFL it's a man's it's a man's game, no doubt about it. But this is this is a if this is true, man, it don't like he gonna be hundred percent anytime soon. You know, if he ain't hundred percent second first year, second year in the NFL, I don't think it's ever gonna happen. This sounds like something that he gonna probably be dealing with for the rest of his career. And another bust in the second round <clears throat> that it's starting to look like. Tease Tabor, Amir Abdullah, Ryan Bros, DeAndre Swift looking like a bus. He can't stay healthy. There's a laundry list of, of those type of guys. You know, and um, you know, and this this is one of the this is second this is outside of Jared Goff, which you never can afford to lose your quarterback. This was the second worst scenario for the Detroit Pistons. Detroit Lions, excuse me. They cannot afford. They cannot afford to lose Anazor. You know, and then on top of that, you couldn't afford to lose Josh Pascal, two of the guys they was counting on to create pressure from the inside of that defense, no longer not there. So you're talking about guys like Michael Brock, uh, Michael Brockers, Aleem McNeil. Isaiah Bugs and probably slide Aiden Hutchinson something past for a situation on the inside to carry the load. And I don't know. They look a real light in the defensive line. They put so many assets over the last 12 years into this defensive line. So many. You know, they put so many assets out there on the defensive line. Man. Like I said before, they got to start finding ways to draft studs at, posi at skill positions. You know, or linebackers, safeties, corners, receivers, running back. They got to find a way to start drafting studs. Because we've been building through the trenches since I can remember. Robert Porsche, Luther Ellis. I mean, you can go on and on. Big Baby Sean Rogers. Fluellen. I mean, Devin Taylor. I mean, all up and through the draft. Willie Young. Ziggy Anson, 
Dominican Sue, Nick Fairley, Cliff Avery. You know, they've been drafting studs forever. They've been trying to build the offensive line forever. That defensive line forever. So, I mean, like I said before, that, I mean, they, they couldn't afford to lose him and Pascal. Now he's going to have to hit the free agent or the waiver wire and try to pick some shit up. You know, Isaiah Bugs, like, that ain't good enough at all. So, I mean, I know you're talking about how Deron Payne, you know, he needed a contract in Washington. You might have to make that call right now. That call may need to be made. And now them passing up on Jordan Davis for Jameson Williams is probably going to come back to bite them in the ass, especially week one. That's who they should have moved up again. I would have figured out it would have worked with Lee McNeil down the line. Dude, we just could have figured that shit out down the line. That's who they should have moved up and got. Or a linebacker or something. Now your defensive line is trash. Your linebacker, of course, trash. What do you expect? You, Charles Harris, going to have the year he had? You see? Hey, Hutchinson got a big uphill battle. Humongous uphill battle. Real, real steep. Real steep. And with him being gone, where does the where does the where does the pressure come from? Come on, Brocker Brockers, he more of a run stopper. Where you getting pressure up the middle from? The, the backup, the backup gone, the starter gone. It wasn't that they couldn't get pressure last year. They wouldn't get no pressure in the quarterback face. And to be honest, this roster looking just as bad as it did last year. To be honest. You know, eight Hudson, yes, that's a big upgrade. But we was expecting big things from Romeo Cora last year. He got injured. Doing his rookie again. Dan Campbell, the one that said we were going to need a big jump from year two players. No, no, uh, on, on, on a Zorke. No Pascal. Two second round picks in a row. None. Melifano moved to safety. He back, you know, he, how you going to have an impact? He a fucking backup. When he should be, when he should be starting at the second cornerback position. They just getting their own way. Derek Barnes, don't think much of him. And his older, I mean, uh, Arizona, he's solid. All right. Still back there with Jeff Okuda and Will Harris. Trash. And then, you know, Jared Goff is still ass. Don't, I don't see a lot of success. Hard knocks, and that shit trash, too. I watched one episode and some change. It's always been trash. After you watch so many of them, it's the same. It's repetitive. And then y'all let Hard Knocks hype y'all ass up to buy grit gear and grit hats and shit. In reality, gonna smack the Lions dead in the fucking face. We won. Mark my words. There's too many of the same cardinal sins being committed. There's too many. There's too, it's too much repetitive nature. Putting their trust back in the same two running backs from last year. DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams. You know, DJ Shark coming off a major injury. Hawkinson coming off an injury. He got injured again. Extend them, and you know, if you can't find a way to give him the fucking football, trade them. You know, no consensus playing behind Jared Goff. Still the two sorry-ass back and quarterbacks behind him. Linebacker core look worse. Defensive line looks significantly worse. Don't look like a 
big upgrade, honestly. You know, people say, oh, you should play Jameson Williams as soon as possible. And when they luck, he gonna fuck around and blow his other ACL out of re-blow his ACL. It's frustrating, dude. A lot of the fans, a lot of the fans, you know, the fanboys, the fandoms, they can't, they can't see what I, what I, what, what guys like me can see. We've been watching the, the Lions a long time. And it's been the same mistakes created by first time GMs that's trash. Same mistakes. Defensive uh, linemen, defense or linemen, and fucking receivers. The only thing he ain't done yet was take a tight end in the second in the first round. Second round bus. Remember Julian McCora? He came off a fractured foot, a fractured leg when he was drafted by Quinn Tertia. Jelani Tabai coming off a fracture. Coming off a shoulder injury. Hawkinson ain't been able to stay healthy. He don't really have an impact. Like you see Travis Kelsey, Dallas Goddard, um, um, George Kittles. So. And then now another second round, the lineage of second round bust, another one, another one bust in the making. T's table, Titus Young, Ryan, Ryan, uh, Ryan Brawls. Uh, I mean, you keep going on. Amir Abdullah, DeAndre Swift trending in the, in the bus direction. Was it Jelani Tobias, second round pick? Kyle Benoit was somewhere in there. It's truly becoming comical. truly becoming comical. You watch the same first time GMs make the same first time, second time, third time mistake. But they refuse to take chances. And you gotta just say, this gotta be something that has to be on, on ownership. They refuse to take chances on guys with character concerns. There's people on the lines right now that's created a fucking federal crime, a local crime, misdemeanor, felonies. They just ain't been caught. Especially in college, where if you play football, it pretty much run the town. It's been guys on there, you know, just because you commit, you commit, you got caught, you know, don't make you no different than nobody else. Somebody out here who a damn killer who just ain't been caught, who got more bodies than niggas in penitentiary. So I never understood the premise of taking uh, chances on injury prone players, but not taking chances on guys that's already injured or not taking a chance on character guys. Character can be rehabilitated just as an injury can be rehabilitated. They're young. They're kids. They're going to make mistakes. So it looks like he won't be 100% this year. I'm ready. If he ain't, you know, if he don't show shit this year, physically, some promise he'll bust. Until proven otherwise. Same thing with DeAndre Swift. Yeah, he flash. Like, a, like, like one of them chicks on Girls Gone Wild. Remember the commercials back in the day? He flash every now and again, but it's no consistency. Then we don't need a flash. We need a consistent bright light. And he ain't that guy. He ain't. So like I said before, that D line, that depth of defensive front seven is is in turmoil. And Dan Campbell trying to. I said I'll have to go back and read the shit. And while he was talking, I read it. Oh, the Jeff Robertson, he's on to something. And, and Dan Campbell gonna fuck around having you like he had last year. Bark my words. And it probably won't be as competitive as it was last year. It probably won't be nowhere near as competitive as they were last year. Bark my words. They will not be as competitive. You know, some things, they, they don't get no pickups. They got a lot of holes, man. They got they should be looking to trade that first round pick for Roquan Smith if they have to. We know it ain't going to be high. The Rams going to be right back in a great position this year. I know Stafford got like the elbow injury and shit like that. And then you look you look at the team, who you look forward, who the, who you look fucking forward to. 
you know, Hudson, that's cool, but, def- you know, defensive ends and the pass rushers, they have an impact, but it's not a huge impact. Like, who they got if shit don't go good that you can say, oh, man, you know, he the future at the quarterback position. They don't have it. They don't have it. They didn't end up with Willis. They didn't end up with Pickett. They didn't end up with nothing. And honestly, them being as bad as they was last year, that's not that's not that's that's not the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is they sit in the middle of the pack. From that eight to the the seventeen range, fifteen range. That's the worst case scenario. Bro, they can't go get a quarterback. You know? You know, that's the one thing about the Detroit Lions, I mean the Pistons. Look, if they not going if they not gonna progressively be good, don't be middle, don't be, you know, kinda like five to ten, motherfucker. You gotta be top worst three records. You know what I'm saying? Well you gotta be on the cusp of, of the play in or you gotta be in the play in the playoffs, I'm fine with that. Same thing with the Lions. They can't be middle of the pack. Or semi middle of the pack. They gotta be they gotta be epically bad. You know? More more times than not. But we don't know how shit gonna shape up no way. It may be it may be several different uh it may be several different good quarterbacks. So you just truly never know. But right now, dude, if I had to say, you know, what the future look like for this team right now, it ain't good. They still they still lack star power. Ain't nothing changed on that tip yet other than Aiden Hutchinson. They still lack star power. They still continue to draft these guys who can't stay healthy. But that is what it is. Uh, you know. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, next subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications, Chris Chance notifications. Find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, all links inside the link tree. On the finance and support the channel, Cash App, Dollar Sign, CJ Good 313. Memo, CJ Good 313. PayPal link in the description. Um, uh, that's in the link tree. Find, uh, follow me on Spotify, Anchor as well, too. Uh, other than that, man, check out the trailer line. So I play some more videos like this. One time, one time, peace.